Welcome back to the GSL Code. We are in our final session to find out who goes to the third round of Code. And we're down to our last best of three. It's Teja versus Genius. Yeah, today people are actually really, really aggressive. We had a lot of quick 2-0s here. Yeah, we Roro did. versus MC, of course, the fastest series that we had today. But also first versus Hero. Not taking any prisoners here. No, not at all. And first, we'll go on to face Gumiho. You know, we talked about it when Gumiho advanced yeah. yesterday, but he has a tough bracket. Whoever gets out of there will go to Kodas, and that's not going to be easy to call. Well, my money is in Gumiho. Yeah, I but, would say it as well, but you know, first has shown some great pros versus Terran in the past. It's going to be tough to beat the fan favorite, and you know, with how well he's been doing, he's won his last five sets in a row <laughs> in the studio. Yeah. It's going to be tough. Gumio is doing really great these days, and it's not going to be easy for first. He's, of course, no easy opponent, but still. Let's focus a bit on our next match, the fourth match of the evening session. Teja against Genius. Yep. These guys used to be on the same plan. They practiced together quite a, lo a lot. This is a long time ago. This is back in the days of early release, before Slayers even existed. And, uh, you know, I'm really curious to see how they are going to do here in this matchup. Like, are they going to play straight up games? Genius is known for his unpredictability. Teja is pretty straight up with his drop play, his really great multitasking. I mean, we've seen aggressive games today, and I don't know if that trend's going to continue, but it just feels like it to me. I feel it on my bones, man. I don't blame those guys. Genius, well, what can we expect from him today? Currently teamless, does not have a team who's looking for one. Can he... Uh, yeah, can he go back to Kodas? Can he uh, just move on into the third round and then even get a direct slaughter? Does he have to go through the up and downs? The same is true for Teja here. Players are in the lobby, they're getting ready. In the studio to the left, we have the Team Liquid player. Belcher Vestage is our first map. And to the right is Genius. What is Genius wearing? I do not know. I was trying to find out. Does that say Coca-Cola? I, think, I so. think that says Coca-Cola, man. Personal sponsoring. Does he have a personal sponsorship? Gom normally makes people wear a Gom shirt if they have no team. I, I think actually, he may have something weird. There, there may be something going on here, man. I don't think so. I would be surprised if that was the case. Happy for him, but surprised. I well, gotta confirm this, dude. We are going into game one. Teja vs. Genius at the GSL Code. Brought to you by Color Wolf. To the top left of Belgium Vestige, we have Globe Chota number two. He just arrived in Korea a few hours ago together with his teammate, Hero. It, 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 it is Liquid Teja. Liquid Teja. Korean stream just threw me off there for a second. Yeah, messing with you. Yeah, messing with me hard. There we have Teja. He was actually defeated by Hero in the NASL tournament. Bottom right of the map, we currently see the Protoss player without a team, but he is still a genius. Genius, rocking the Coca Cola hoodie. Yep, it really is a Coca Cola hoodie. <laughs> Probably refuse to wear a shirt because it's like, you know, man, too cold, guys. I'm not Gumiho. Gumiho yeah. can do that. He can wear a shirt in this weather. I can't. Yeah, the uh, Gom normally requires people to wear the Gom shirt when they are teamless, and uh, that's a short sleeve shirt. It's pretty cold in there. It's maybe they didn't have a Gom hoodie, you know? Yeah, maybe he's, uh, maybe the ones that they have were actually in pain right now. Who knows? Yeah. The thing is, you talked a little bit about the aggressive builds. I would actually not blame Teja if he goes for some kind of 2-rex opening or whatever, like proxies or double early gas. He doesn't do that, he goes for 14 cc, exactly the opposite. But I wouldn't have blamed him because yeah. this guy must be tired. He must be tired, man, and we may see it in some of these later games. Genius, not so favored in this by winner prediction. Teja taking 70.5. You know, with Teja's performance in the last few GSL seasons, I don't actually blame them for the prediction, but it's just feel that a lot of these guys made their decision without knowing about how much Teja would have to travel. We saw that it really affected Hero in the last game. Finale, uh, sorry, first of course did well, but it was also a bit of a, a tribute to a hero just being, uh, just coming off from an international flight, and that is really uh, taxing. Yeah, it certainly is. It's so difficult, and I think probably most people watching this cast have not traveled internationally, or at least not often. Consider that 
with all these events here has been going to, he hasn't probably been able to go home, really. And that really starts to wear on you. Uh, Nexus goes down here as three. After he spots the command center first, he's like, all right, well, I'm going to cut some corners and get my next up faster because obviously no pressure's coming my oh. way. We actually had a few people arriving in Korea today, not only here on Tasia, but also Ateosis is not back in Korea. Yeah, he's been gone for about four weeks, he just got back. He's probably watching right now, I wouldn't be surprised. He had a couple of really funny trips, he had one trip where he was at the IAM Singapore, came back to Korea for a flight that actually delayed, he was here like six hours and then had to go to the next uh, flight right back, uh, right to Las Vegas. Yep. That was pretty fun, but well... This pressure is pretty cool, he's gonna get the depot up, he should. Yeah. But, uh, why does that remind me of Cabo? <laughs> I can tell you why. That is so 100% that scene, you know? There's all that walking up that ramp that is just, we just need the SUV. No, no cool animation with the depot raising underneath the zealot though and dropping the zealot back down. That would be pretty cool. Ooh, look at that. He just going into four racks from here. So much for your, yeah, very passive style. Yeah. And Genius, on the other hand, is getting his gases up. He's now taking both at the main base. And Genius, with the fast Nexus here, looks like he wants to at least gear up for a later game. But there are a lot of two-base timings that he's unlocked here as well. That's going to be really interesting to see what Teja is going to do right now. If he can just pressure a little bit, follow with all the minerals that he will have, this laid up with an additional command center, and then go into gas. Whatever he does, it will mean that his tech is very, very late. And Genius goes up to four, three gates actually. Teja could do, well he's taking his gases now, so I think he's just going to pressure Keen style. He's going to try to avoid the watchtowers and sneak in and do some damage with his marines. But, uh, you know, Teja has a lot of possibilities with this. If he does any damage at all, he's going to be able to transition into his tech and feel okay, despite the fact that Genius might be taking fast on him. It's something he's not going to know without a scan. SCV scout was shut down also by Genius. And for Genius, we have immediately a robotics. He wants to know, okay, what is going on? What are you doing? How fast did you take a gas? How many barracks do you have? What's your production capacities? Yeah, he's curious. Just not Sartail curious. Yeah, that guy plays Zerg. Yeah. These Marines moving out on the map. There's 17 Marines on the map in total. Looks like about... Uh, 12 to 13 of them are coming across the map on the ground right now, and the Stalkers... Uh-oh! Oh, wow. Bye-bye. Nice. Nice. First Stalker is gone, and here come the Marines. It's time for... Oh, wow, well, there's not a good place to warp in here. Yep, and the Sentry is being targeted immediately. Oh, those Zealots also without shields, without hit points, which means they're dead. Yep. And that same fate is gonna happen to a lot of probes. Yes. Genius actually fights with the probes, and this is not a trade he wants to take. Take the targets all. down here. 12 probes have been killed. Genius is down to 48 supply. The harvester count for Genius is now 36 against 41 with SCVs. With Chrono Boost, with a fast Nexus. And against Teja's double mule. Well, good luck, Genius. You'll need it. This is not going to be easy, but he is going to take a risk as a response, which is taking yeah. that fast third nexus to the left side of the map. On this map in particular, like many new maps we have in our pool, it's very difficult for the Pros to hold the third base against Terran aggression. Well, actually, it's going to be impossible for him to hold that base because Teja is already walking down to the bottom left, and this time it's not only Marines. He has Marauders. a few Marauders in this army, too. So if Teja actually sees this and goes straight for the third, there is just no way for Genius to hold this base. He's doubling Genius' supply in army right now. And that, that just goes to show how much damage can be done here. He's also got these 1-1 one -one upgrades going out. And Stim will finish pretty soon here. Genius cannot fight this. No. He won't Now he try. might try with good force fields. Uh, yeah, if he gets good force fields here, that will work. And nice micro here, nice pathing here for Deja. But he's going to lose a lot. He takes down the most important key units though. Yeah, the sentry is falling. Ah, a bit of a misclick. Yeah, misclick a little bit there. I have to say, this is a really nice hold for Genius. He equalizes here really well. And I'm a little bit surprised Teja didn't even check for the third base. If now, he had just checked, he would have gotten the Nexus for free. Yeah, he could have killed this Nexus or forced the cancel easily. Because the problem, that, well, the advantage that Genius obviously now had with this defense was that he could just swap in units right at the fight. And that gives him a bit of an edge. But as it is, we still have this lead for Teja intact. And it's quite significant. This guy is going for plus one, plus one. He has stimmed that. He's Armory. on his way for Kokasov Shell. Armory. 
three barracks, and Genius is just now getting those two, well, yeah, his forges. forges, his forges are coming up. He's barely even been able to use his third next because he just got probes over there. Whereas Teja, on the other hand, is finishing up his third command center. So as far as economy goes, he's not even that far behind. He's been ahead off the two bases for a while with the damage he did with that early four barracks pressure. And now Genius needs to figure out how to tech it in, in forward, going uh, forward in this game because is he going to stick with Colossi? It looks like it. He's getting a, the Thermal Lance upgrade. But if he does that, can he keep up with the upgrades of Teja and fight against Vikings as soon as Teja finds out the Colossi are going to be a problem? Look at that army, it looks so tiny and weak. There's no real support for the Colossus. That's the army. It's only a model of an army. That's a militia. Yeah. Well, here comes Teja. Supply is nearly even. Upgrades are the issue. Force fields can make an army look much bigger though, and that's yep. what we just saw. Teja can't fight this yet, not without his upgrades and not without Vikings. He doesn't even have combat shields yet. It's about to finish, but fighting that without combat shields would have been suicidal. Where's and Teja's plus two, plus two? Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. If he really wants to wait now a little bit and wants to play a late game with the well, starport that he's adding right now, he should go into those upgrades because Genius is going to lose his fortress. And this, I'm not sure if Teja is playing a little bit too greedy here. There are two Colossi already. He reacted pretty slow in that fight. He didn't stim, he didn't really split his units, and he's still ahead in supply. So that was not a good trade at all. He does not have plus 2-2 two, two upgrade started yet. He doesn't have the you know, gas to afford it while he's trying to switch to these Vikings. Genius now with this third base that he got earlier is really closing the gap that happened when Teja took this massive lead in the game. So Teja, it looked a little bit like that he does not really know what he wants to do here. He's heavily supply blocked and just started three supply depots. A little bit uncharacteristic here for him. Yeah. And we still, now there's the plus two attack upgrade, but that's a little bit late. I and like Genius actually is nearly completing his Twilight Council and can also add it to the next wave of upgrades. I feel like he's actually starting this 2-2 because he didn't have the resource to build gas units. Yeah. Uh, he was like, oh, well, now oh, I got he, he was supply block, that's yeah, why. exactly. So I think that he, he was like supply block, and he was like, oh, now I can start 2-2. Two -two. Um, this is not good. He actually picks up right away because he knows that he wants to save these units from force fields. He actually drops out the units to save them. Now he stims and runs in, but he still doesn't have enough, I feel. He needs more Vikings. Yeah. He needs not only more Vikings, also his medivac count is not all too impressive. He has only three. So for this, for the time being, he decides to not be aggressive anymore. Gets the plus one attack upgrade now for the Vikings. We have it with plus two, plus two. But on the other hand, Genius did not only start to catch up in upgrades, he will actually be able to get ahead. Yeah, it's very true. He's also getting Storm. This is what we were talking about earlier. You know, how many Colossi is going to stick before he goes to Storm? He's actually getting Storm out here before the 15 minute mark. And Teja has to be careful how he engages now. I like to see Teja make a fourth command center and just chill out. And actually, he's already making it at his, his third. He's got it right over there. Let's make that chill out, max out, get those upgrades, catch up, and try to do maybe some drops. Yeah, Teja had an early lead, a super, super lead in this game, but then he, well, Genius kind of negated that. Teja is still a little bit ahead here, but he needs to just play this a little bit more micro style. He does not have this huge momentum going anymore. And now with the Ghost Academy, he will go into EMPs. But as you said, draw play might be the answer. It might be. There's a lot of Vikings here. He's going to get a good con game at the bottom of this ramp. Genius needs to be careful here. Oh wow, the Vikings getting so many good hits. A few additional Vikings reinforcing as well. And Genius is dropping in supply right now. He's dropping fast, and the next Colossus is also gone. And look at this bio forces. There are still around in the next round of warp. It might save Genius for now, though. 2-2 two -two finishing for Genius before Tejas is done as well, and that helps him push this back. Wow. And we have a fourth base for Genius now at the right side of the map. Yeah, it's spotted. Imagine if we had storms at that battle, how that could have changed things. Oh. That was that shape everything because we don't see any ghosts just yet. Yeah, and he had Templar walking across that just couldn't get to the battle in time, that had enough energy for storms, he just couldn't use them. That's part of Teja's tactics, man, is to surprise Genius. Genius, make sure he attacks him where Genius can't set up, that's how he got in the bottom of the ramp. Had that concave, he had the Vikings at such a good angle because he has that element of surprise, of unpredictability. Plus three, plus three, this time immediately for Teja. He has those upgrades on the board. Genius as well. Bottom left, a bit of a task for starting and trying to take down this third, and that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, a lot of these units on so low hit points, but 
Will the Storms actually clear this up? He doesn't have enough energy yet. Oh, and he targets out the Templar and gets the Nexus. Well done. Really, really well done. And at the same time, he saves. Uh, does he save the command center? I guess not. Yeah, probably not, but it's a command center for a Nexus. And Teja already Ooh. still has three command centers. And actually, he didn't. Okay, now it died. I was about to say, he didn't kill it yet. Oh, oh wow, Storm. Storm here, he wants to hit the army, and he does, actually, Genius nice has zoning. turned this around really fast, actually, with that great engagement. Yeah, that was a really good position for him, and very nice zoning, and oh, well, wow. this time he's not going to get the... Oh, is he getting the... No, he doesn't get the Nexus. No, not quite. But it was close. It was very close. Genius is going to get some extra mining from this, though. I bet Teja will actually go for a drop and kill this later. It's not going to live, but if he does that, he's going to have less units in his main army when Genius' next wave of units hits, because right now he's about to hit hard with 3 through upgrades. It's going to be close. I'm not sure who's actually going to have 3 through first. If Genius hits two more chronos, I think he'll get it first, but it's only going to be maybe like a 10-second window. But still, as long as he has a little bit of a window, he can try to use it. If he has a bit of a creator timing to him, then it's going to work well. But right now, this is actually going to... Yeah, this goes... This goes Genius' way. He has a 40 supply lead in this game. He has a very scary army composition, so he was able to turn things around after he was behind. He's oh, yeah. There we go. What about the storms? There's some ghosts here. They're coming from the back. He needs to hit EMPs. He EMPs, but not on the Templar. One Templar is hit, but the other two still have storms. Oh, one more storm is ready. Can he get in? He does drop it. It's not the best storm. But he does damage. It certainly does. The Colossus at the back is still alive here. And I think Teja is in a little bit of trouble right now with these reinforcements coming from the left side. Arkans moving in and Teja types GG. Game one goes to Genius. The Liquid player down MF. Has to be careful here if he doesn't want to suffer the same fate as Hero did. And Genius playing well, behind in the game, all on. And then turning things around. Teja here, just visited by Shiro. We had uh, a lot of moments in this game where the, the pace of the game changed. Yeah. Where in the beginning, Teja took an early lead. Then he got a little bit over aggressive, didn't check for the third base, which he could have had for free. Lost most of his units to a good defensive warping by Genius. Then Genius had a third base first. Teja had to turn things around with his better upgrades. We had a lot of back and forth action in the game. That one fight where Genius upgrades finished a little bit faster and he could use them in the fight where Teja had to fall back. Yeah, and that fight at Teja's fourth base that was a little bit exposed, he lost a lot of SCDs there as well as units. So Genius took a lead there, kept his own Nexus alive, and with those resources, imagine if he had lost a Nexus, he would not have been able to reinforce and end the game so quickly. Abyssal City being uh, the next map here. And Teja has to win. If he wants to advance to the next round and have a shot at Code S, he needs to take this game. Abyssal City is going to be a bit advantageous for him. Genius here. Won't be able to play this map, but he has the lead in the best of three. They're just waiting for the game to be ready. And then it's time for the Team Liquid player to show us his skills. He need a little bit more time to prepare for his match against Genius. Yeah. Do not have to play at the last day of NASL. Defeated early in tournaments, and here we go. Abyssal City has loaded. Guys, get ready. Genius versus Stasia. Game two. All over the radio and back up in the raves again.